In this video, we're going through our go-to best practices around UX design in Bubble, because you could end up spending a lot of time building an app that's hard to use if you don't know how to use Bubble tools properly. So this is gonna help you create a more consistent and more enjoyable app experience instead. The first best practice is to use styles. Bubble has a great style management system where you can create preset appearance properties for all of your visual elements in your page designs, buttons, text, containers, things like that. With one click, you can apply a style to an element and that may affect multiple appearance settings. So there are many benefits to using styles here. The first is that it can help you create a super consistent look and feel across all of your pages in your app. The second is that it can help you speed up your work. Again, you're applying a style in one simple click. Compare that to configuring all the appearance properties element by element, that's gonna add up over time. So styles can really help you move much more efficiently in your work. The third reason is that styles can also be a performance helper. By organizing all of these settings in one central location, that's a lot less work for Bubble behind the scenes compared to loading in individual settings on every single element. Now, this isn't to say that you're not going to configure individual elements from time to time. You'll certainly run into that, but take advantage of styles as much as you can. Address the areas that'll have the biggest impact, the biggest presence throughout your app. Start with figuring out your color palette. What are your primary colors gonna be, your secondary colors? When you set up your color variables, they'll show up as shortcuts in all of the color pickers you have available to you throughout the editor. And also think about how you're gonna create visual hierarchy in your page designs. You're likely going to have labels for things, titles for different sections, set up a few different styles for text so that you can have defined headings, subheadings, field labels, and things like that. Not to mention, styles are incredibly helpful for team situations too. If you're working with other people, having a consistent style reference to go back to will keep everyone on the same page. So if you take the time to set up your key styles, you'll actually be saving yourself a ton of work and effort later on down the road. The next best practice is to design your pages on a grid, some configuration of rows and columns. Every visual element you add to your page, text, buttons, images, you name it, should fall within this grid structure. Now, the number of rows and the number of columns, the widths and heights of them, that's up to you. You can configure however you need so that it makes sense for your app. But a grid system keeps things structured. You know, most people will absorb a page when they first look at it, top to bottom, left to right. And a grid system makes it easier to do this. If you look at any website or application that you use now, you're gonna find this grid system. It may be uh, you know, a mix and match of various rows and columns of different shapes and sizes, but at the end of the day, you need to be able to distribute your elements evenly, have spacing and alignment that makes sense so that the content is easy to consume. This is why tables are structured in the way they are. It's easy to absorb a lot of information and not lose yourself. Now, of course, the way that you format certain visual properties will help indicate you know, hierarchy, Certain things are gonna be more bold, maybe the size of some text will be bigger or smaller, but the placement of everything on your page should fall within a grid system. And in Bubble, the responsive settings available to you actually encourage you to design on a grid. You wanna start by adding containers to your page. These are groups that allow you to put visual elements inside of them. And the containers themselves are set up in a way to have everything within it fall within a row or a column. And from there, you can configure the spacing, the alignment to fit your exact needs. I highly recommend that you get in the habit of using containers as the base layer of all of your designs. Also in your Bubble Apps Editor within the design canvas, you can enable a grid underlay so that you can have more precision on how things are falling on that grid structure. This is simply a design tool for you to help you put things together behind the scenes. The next best practice relates to dynamic lists. And in Bubble, there are two elements that can help you work with dynamic lists in a more scalable and reliable way. These are the repeating group and the table element. Now, when you work with dynamic lists, we're typically talking about pulling data from your database, maybe from an option set, or from a third-party integration. The idea is that you may want to present a list of items that are unknown to you ahead of time. So this could be search results or it could be user-specific information, such as projects that have been assigned to a person. And the repeating group and table elements help you present that list of items in a uniform way. It doesn't literally have to be a table. There are many different configurations that you can create with these elements, 
but they're there to help you create a uniform design where you don't need to design every individual item separately because the number of items is unknown. All you need to do is configure a template of one item and the element will do the rest in terms of duplicating that for you. This is a big time saver. It helps reduce any errors or inconsistencies and overall can help you create more interactive designs as well. Users can filter your search results and the list will change on them, for example. Take a look at this example design here we have with a repeating group to display subscription plan options. We only need to design one cell here within the repeating group and the element will duplicate that cell based on the number of options we have in the database. I can even use a condition to change some of the properties of a specific cell based on the data that it's referencing, such as making this middle group a little bit bigger to showcase that this is the more popular option most of our subscribers go for. Definitely take advantage of these elements so that you don't create more work for yourself than you really need and you have a more scalable solution. Speaking of not designing the same thing over and over and over again, let's talk about the reusable element. The reusable element is a special type of element Bubble has for creating a global design and even workflows attached to that design that you can apply to multiple pages. This way, you don't have to rebuild that same design, rebuild all of the same logic behind the scenes for every page independently. The reusable element is a huge time saver. It also helps reduce errors. Menus are one of the most popular use cases for reusable elements. If you set up a menu system once, you can apply instances of that element on all of the pages that you want to see that menu. If you make an adjustment within the reusable element, you'll see that change reflected across all of your pages automatically. Again, it's a huge time saver. Headers and footers in general are also common use cases for reusable elements because you generally want to see the same uh, frame that you're creating on all of your pages. That way it creates a more cohesive experience throughout the entire app. We've also seen reusable elements get used for common functionality, such as showing a pop-up to confirm deleting something, or showing a list of action items within a repeating group cell. Your users aren't going to know that you're implementing this special type of element behind the scenes, but they're certainly going to feel its effects because the purpose of a reusable element is to help you stay consistent. Of course, it's to help you reduce you know, your own work, the number of times that you repeat yourself, but it inherently creates this consistency across your entire application. And that makes for a much better experience on the front end. Hey, real quick, if you're finding this helpful, we've put together a complete guide to help you figure out if Bubble is right for your app. If you're interested in checking it out, you can head over to coachingnocodeapps.com slash bubble hyphen guide. I've also put the link in the description below. As you can see, this guide walks through everything from pricing to performance, IP ownership, and more. Head to coachingnocodeapps.com slash bubble hyphen guide to get immediate access. Let's talk about responsive design. Responsive design can really make or break your user's experience because there are so many devices that they could be on in order to access your app. All of these devices have different screen widths and your page designs in your app may not necessarily be universal. You may need to create logic behind the scenes to change the responsive behavior based off of what are called breakpoints. So it's up to you to create different breakpoints to adjust things. For example, a desktop computer is going to have more room to show more information, more visual elements, right? You may always have a menu, for example, present on the page. As your page narrows, you may decide to make your text a little smaller. You may decide to change the margins and the spacing between elements. You may want to collapse your elements into more vertical structures compared to horizontal ones. Okay. And on even smaller screens, such as a smartphone compared to a desktop, you may even completely swap out what you are displaying on the page. Menus are a really common example of this. So like I said, on a desktop screen, you may always have that menu present. Whereas on a mobile screen, you may replace that with a more mobile friendly menu that may be hidden behind an icon, for example. It is up to you to create the breakpoints that make sense for your app. If navigating your pages become more cumbersome for your users, you risk having them abandon the app altogether. It's actually expected these days for applications to have strong responsive design. So don't forget about this as you're developing your app. The next UX best practice relates to app messaging. These are messages that you as the application are presenting to your user. 
So these can be warnings, alerts, confirmations, or titles and instructions that you add to your page designs. This also speaks to tone of voice, you know, the actual language that you're using to speak with your users. Your app may have a personality, right? Uh, a tone of voice that is more appropriate for your particular market. And there are a couple of areas that you can work with to ensure that these messages are customized properly. The first are system messages. Bubble has a big list of system messages that it has already configured for you. And you can customize them. You can change the actual wording and you can override the way that it appears to the user. If you leave everything on the defaults, you're going to get a very basic presentation of that message. And it's very easy to leave those on the defaults, but if you're looking to improve your user experience, I highly recommend you take the time to customize these system messages for yourself. In the workflows, Bubble has a way for you to create error handling events, and this is how you can override those defaults. The next area related to this is app texts. App texts are a way for you to create sort of global translations of text content. So this could be a heading that you have on a page or an instruction that you want to display somewhere. And you can create the translation across all the languages you want to support so that dynamically, whatever language the user is tied to, the correct form of that app text will display for them. This is super helpful if you're building a multilingual application. Now, user experience is not just about the colors you use or the position of your elements on your page. It also speaks to how you present your content. You want to make sure that it's easy to understand. You know, most bubble applications are very data driven. So you're typically working with a lot of dynamic data coming from a variety of sources. It can come from your database, from CSV imports, from third party integrations, from option sets and inputs that users are typing into in real time. And so how all of this data is formatted can be really inconsistent. You have the ability to reformat your content. And there are several reasons why you'll want to do this. The first is just pure legibility on the page. If you normalize how things appear, then it's going to be easier to consume. For example, let's say that you have a sign up form that asks your users to provide a username. And users can type in whatever they want. So they could have a mix of uppercase and lowercase characters. They could have spaces. If you reformat those usernames coming in, you can make things more normalized, just more consistent overall. So then if a user is looking through a list of usernames, it's just easier to read. Formatting your data can also help with context. So if you have a table of numbers that actually need to be presented as prices, then you want to reformat those numbers so that they include a currency symbol, a decimal. You may want to round the numbers so that you have a consistent number of characters after the decimal. And that way, it's much easier for the user to understand, all right, these are prices. Dates are another popular type of data that can be reformatted, especially when you have international users, because dates and times can be written many different ways. You can have the day in front of the month or the month in front of the day. You may have 12 hour formatting for times versus 24 hour formatting. And if you know what format is going to make the most sense, be the most helpful for your users, then you're giving them a better experience. So overall, Bubble has a variety of tools to help you reformat your content in a way that's going to make it as easy to understand as possible. Speaking of dynamic situations, you can also take advantage of conditions to create smarter designs for your users. Conditions are not just for workflows. You can use conditions to change visual appearance properties under certain scenarios. These can be user specific scenarios, uh, you know, what their relationship is to data on the page. It can be date specific, lots of different combinations that you can create here. So here are a few examples. Let's say that you have a table of contracts that displays, you know, the title of the contract, the people involved and the expiration date. And you want to, within a week of that expiration date, change the color of the date so that it's red, maybe make it bigger, maybe make it bold. Right? By creating this visual cue, you can help a user very quickly understand that the expiration is coming soon and they may need to take an action. Otherwise, it could be easy to miss. Okay, So this is a color change, a simple color change on one piece of text that can make a big impact on the user's experience in the application overall. Another example is with search results. You may want to help your user understand which search results they've already seen so they don't waste time opening up the results that they've seen before. This could be, again, a color change 
on the title of the search result or maybe even an icon that appears. And these are accomplished through conditions, right? If this is true, then make this visual appearance change. Another example is showing users which buttons are disabled, especially in a temporary situation. So if a user is filling out a form that has required inputs and they haven't yet filled out those required inputs, you can show the user visually that the submit button is currently disabled. And that helps them understand, okay, I still have other steps to take. So the appearance property can change from a strong you know, color in the background to a more subdued background color. It quickly lets them know that they still need to take other actions. These subtle changes can make a huge difference in how your users experience the feature. And if you're consistent with this approach throughout your entire application, they're going to have a much better experience overall, right? The less they have to think when they're navigating your app, the better. All right. I hope this was helpful. And if it was the content you're about to see on the screen next will help you take things even further.